Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today's tutorial is going to be for our Daisy blanket. Super excited about this blanket because it goes along with a brand new picture book that my sister and me and Hannah wrote and designed together. My sister did all the artwork. I have a separate video where I read the book to you and that link will be down in the descriptions if you're seeing this on YouTube. But anyway, it's just so, so cute. So I've made a blanket to go along with the book and it's got this darling daisy right in the middle of it. Let me see if I can lift my camera up even higher so you can see. You'll need to go to our website in order to print off the graph. And uh, you will be using a size K hook. If you're going to use the same yarn as me, it is Bernat Softy Baby, but I'm going to show you how I doubled up the skein. I'm crocheting with two, um, two uh, strands put together. Okay, let's get started. So first thing you're going to want to do is we're going to make some uh, fist size, maybe a little bit bigger, balls of yarn and it's much easier to go ahead and get your yarn all combined first instead of crocheting from just two at the same time because we're going to be switching yarn colors quite a bit during through the daisy portion so you're going to want to have these um, yarn the yarn already wound together okay so i just match up two ends and i just start rolling them together and make them about fist size. I think you're gonna, of the white color, you're for sure going to want four, five, maybe even six of them um, so that you'll you'll be ready. Uh, the, of course, you'll only need one of the gold color. And for the gray color, you'll probably want about four or five too to have ready to go. After you make um, your yarn into these balls, it will be handy if you also have some sandwich bags, baggies that you can put each one into, and then also have like a chip clip. This will help really keep your yarn organized and you'll be clipping this onto the blanket. And it's just through the, the petal rows. Okay, so I'm going to work a few more, get a few more um, balls together. Look at the, the yarn that comes out. It'll take me a minute. All right, hold on. All right, so I also really think that you'll definitely want to do a sample swatch because when you double up the yarn, it's kind of hard to know exactly what size hook you'll want to use. Turned out I liked my tension with a size K hook. This is a 6.5 millimeter hook. All right, another thing is when you print the graph, I think you're going to want to adjust your own printer settings to enlarge the graph. And then I had to kind of cut it and paste it together. Um, this is really tiny, but if you've got good eyes, you are going to be fine. So the graph is numbered with the number one and it goes across over to 80. So each, and it's one on each side, so you'll know. When you read the graph, the chain row doesn't count. W row one is the actual herringbone half, and you're going to read it right to left. When you read, go to row two, you'll read it left to right. So remember that odd is right to left, even is left to right. All right, so I'm just using the herringbone half double crochet. I'll start with a regular chain and just for today's tutorial, I'm only going to chain about 20. And, um, but for the graph, you know, you'll chain 82. You wanna add two onto your base of 80. Now, if you wanted to make this even larger of a blanket, I, the width for me turned out to be 30 inches, but if you wanted to make it bigger, just add blocks of, you know, probably add 
10 stitches on either side. So for a total of 20, I just add 10 over here and 10 over here for 20. I think that will probably get you the width for a nice larger throw. Oh, and then you'd also want to add 10 down here. So you'd, you'd be adding 10 rows first before you started. And then that way you could finish with 10 rows on top. Okay. All right, so I have 20 chains on my hook and I'll start in the third chain from the hook. I've yarned over. I'm going to insert my hook just under the top loop, yarn over, pull a loop back through and pull through the first loop on the hook. Then yarn over and pull through two. That's called the herringbone half double crochet. I love this stitch. I use it a lot. I just like that it gives a nice flat texture, but it kind of is the height of a double crochet, but not um, doesn't have quite the holes, doesn't create holes. It really creates a nice, more knit looking fabric. All right, I'm just gonna work one herringbone half double crochet in each chain across the row. Now I'm going to give you the option to either chain one and turn or chain two and turn. These just, they don't act as stitches, they're just height to get up to the next row. So for this blanket I ended up just chaining one because I didn't want a lot of extra bulk on the side of the blanket and it turned out just fine. But if you have troubles finding the last stitch of a row, go ahead and mark this first stitch that you make. Grab a stitch marker and I don't have one handy here, but go ahead and mark this very stitch. Just like put a safety pin in it. Then you'll know that is the last stitch of the row. Cause sometimes when you only do chain one, this stitch, when you come back, this can kind of be hidden. So it's kind of nice to have that marked. Okay, I'm just gonna work. I think I'll just work a couple rows here and then I'll show you how to change color and, and how to clip the yarn onto your blanket so you'll understand what, because um, when you get to the petals, you can have up to seven balls of yarn and it will be a kind of a tangled mess if you don't have them clipped onto the blanket. This is one of those things that I wish I would have discovered a whole lot earlier. Oh, might make a, you know, this tip might make a corner to corner blanket a lot easier to make or any kind of um, project. You know, I have that cactus blanket and I wish I would have known to clip the bags. I mean, I, Figured out to put the balls of yarn in the little baggies, but oh, I wish I would have clipped into the bank blanket. Would have made it so much easier to turn with all those little balls of yarn. So anyway, still is a little bit cumbersome. Cumbersome. I'm. It's not the you know most. I like most of the time I sat at a table through the when I made the daisy through the blanket. I couldn't really have it in my lap. It just got too confusing for me. But once I got through the, all the petals, then it was pretty much home free. Okay, now this is the end of working on that first row. So I can see the two turning chains and that's okay. I'm just gonna leave those alone. I kind of left these, the two turning chains because this is your corner space. So when you work the border, you'll have the room to do it. So it's okay that there's two chains right there. But anyway, this is the top of that stitch. So I'll just chain one and turn. And now let's show 
you, let's change yarn a couple, a couple times. So say on your graph, you've come up and there's a white space in the next space. So say right here, you're going to just work under the one, stop when there's two loops. Now, go ahead, my gray yarn is a little bit big, but let's go ahead and put this into a plastic bag. So we're done using it for that side. And I actually found that the baggies without the Ziplocs were a little bit easier to play around with too. Here's our white. Now, I will just simply lay the white yarn over my hook and pull through. And according to the graph, do however many stitches there are. Let's say there was two that I needed to do. So I complete the one and start the second one just like that and end. Get this yarn into a little baggie and here's where the clips come in handy. Is that also, I'll just clip this on to the blanket. Ah, okay, sorry. There we go. Clip that one on. I'll probably have to work down just a little bit more. And let's see, let's go ahead and add the yellow in. See what I'm saying? It kind of gets a little bit tricky. But of course, you'll have more stitches through. Ah, uh, well some of that gray portion. There's just one stitch. Okay, so say we're working the yellow portion. Let's give us some space here. And now we have to change back to say um, the white. This is where you're going to want another, pull another ball of yarn and pull through with the white. Okay, whoops. Let's get this. There we go. Pull through with the white. Leave that yellow behind. And now Technically, through the rows where there are these this many changes, you're going to want to have another ball of gray to change to. And I don't have one here handy, so I'll just stick with the white to the end of the row. But this gives you um, just kind of how cumbersome it can be just through when you're working, I think, like about three or four petals. I'll grab the graph and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here we go. Now before we turn the blanket, absolutely, this is what I'm gonna definitely wanna make sure all my little yarn has been clipped on to the blanket. So say here's this white one. And I only grab two clips. Put this one in with a clip clip and then it's already clipped on then you'll be able to easily turn your blanket and all that yarn stays. If you don't, you see how I didn't have these. I didn't have these in bat and they get they get crossed. So very important to have this is our tail. Have the yarn into the things. Okay. So then we just get get going now, just so I can show you. Let's undo these. Now I'm going to show you how to pull up the color when you need it again. Okay, so here's my chain one and two and turn. Okay, I go ahead and leave, oh, I gotta go through one. Okay, so say it's time for me 
to work this yellow right on top of the yellow. So I go ahead and get it. And I've left the white to the back and probably always do that. Always leave it to the back when you're ready to um, pull it through because then it will be on the front of your work when you're ready on the next row after you turn it. Okay, so it's just right there for me. So I go ahead and pull through. Now I I had, you have a decision to make and it's it's completely up to you. Do you see how this kind of cuts across the stitch? You can go ahead and in, insert your hook and you will have this, this little line on your stitch, which it looks totally fine too. It's, I mean, there's just, that's not wrong or anything. Or if you don't like that, go ahead and go underneath it and then work into the stitch and come back out on this side of it. And then it kind of pulls that over. So if you if you like your line to be a little bit more right on top of the stitch, you know, do it that way. But it's completely up to you. Those are the two ways that you could do that. All right, but say that you need to change color one stitch before. We're not working exactly on. I'm still going to leave the yellow to the back. Now I will go ahead, find my white, get it out of the bag here. Find the one I need. Here it is. I'll go ahead and just still pull it all the way across. Like that. And then the important thing is, is to, is to again, decide, do you want to go on this side of the, of the, of the strand or on that side? It's completely up to you. But you'll go ahead and just pull it across. I ended up, I think if it was too much like that, I personally went underneath the strand and like that. Okay, that'll kind of help you out. Just like that. Let's go back to our gray. We'll leave that white back behind. Pull it up. There we go. Okay, it's time to turn. So through those rows, like I was saying before, take the time, put your yarn back into the baggies and clip those baggies onto the blanket. All right, so that kind of gets you through several of the color changes. That would be the only thing. So it'll just be counting on the graph for that portion. So let me show you on the graph what I mean, how like you'll have, you'll be working gray. You want to drop the gray, attach that ball of, of yarn, you know, onto your blanket right here. You'll use white. You'll have another gray right here. Use a different white for right here, a different ball of gray here, a different ball of white here. So you could have in one row through these rows, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ball, little balls of yarn to be working with. All right, and it's kind of then you just get a big relief. And then when you're here, you drop them off, just cut the tails, you'll weave them in later after you get through this, and then you'll have one gray over here, a lot of white, I mean one ball of white, and then a second gray over here. So three balls of yarn through those. Then add in and then you'll just be so happy once you finally get that last one in and then you're home free and you can add your gray. All right, so the border is a um, front loop and our not front loop. It's our ribbing border and we have lots of video tutorials for that and I'll link them in the blog post, but you'll just pull up a loop and start working front and back post double crochet. The one thing I did do differently for this blanket though is after I did all of the ribbing, I went ahead and worked one round of single crochet. So, but um, 
I've, I have demonstrated that border quite a bit, and so I will leave a link to that, to um, the front and back post ribbing if you need to see that video. But I think most of you are familiar with how we add that onto a lot of our blankets. Okay, I think I've given you the basics. Think you really will be successful. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming by. Here is our book again. Of course, links are in the blog post. Links will be down in the descriptions on YouTube. We just cannot thank you all enough for following us, for loving crochet as much as us, sharing your blankets with us. I am so excited to start seeing some of your daisy blankets in our Daisy Farm Crafter group because I know they're going to be amazing. And I know the color schemes sometimes that you all do are just, oh, you're so clever. So clever. I'm just blown away by all the talent there is out there. So thank you so much for sharing with us and you have a wonderful day.